In the characterization of a princess and monster or every kind of character, air plays an important role. It represents the culture of the character, the historical period it belongs to, its personality. For example, floating air stands for the will to run away from a word, and curly air is the clue for an untamable temperament. But the problem is, how can we represent such a powerful element in a realistic way without losing its communicative potential? This is the issue that we're going to deal with, starting from traditional and Japanese animation. Studio Ghibli and Walt Disney Studios were the first to seriously deal with air as a vehicle of message. In Japanese animation, studies have been made on characters with short and long hair. For example, while the short hair Nausicaa is confident enough to do what is needed, Sophie must first gain confidence in herself before she can truly save anyone else. As far as it concerned Walt Disney Studios, we already talked about Ariel's floating hair. But what about Pocahontas? Her air is always moved by wind as a reminder of her struggle between the love for her land and the love for the invader John Smith. 2001 was the year of the revolution. The advent of computer graphics changed a lot of things, but not everything. Traditional animation was still the natural starting point of this new world. It's interesting that, although the optical properties of single air were well understood, the composite properties of air volume was extremely complicated. Monsters Inc. is the first example of struggling with these crucial elements. VST was the software engine used for speed up the production. It incorporated the natural laws of physics to control the behavior of virtual objects. Its shot, lasting 5 seconds, took only 1 to 2 hours to create. In the past, the process took 1 to 2 weeks. The next milestone came in 2004 with The Incredibles. The most difficult character to animate from a hair standpoint was Violet. She remained an unsolved research project due to her long flowing hair. In fact, no one had ever animated this kind of hair before for a CG film. The problem was to keep movement coherent since it was impossible to simulate every hair, but when the bug properties were replaced, the hair tended to lose coherence. Pixar made a lot of parameter adjustment to FISTI, implementing the volumetric method. Computer graphics can do everything without the contribution of traditional animation. In fact, for Disney Tangled, a set of drawings created by Glenn Keane was used as its guideline for the position and look of CGR for each frame. The next challenge was then represented by Rapunzel, the girl with 70 feet of magical hair. Hair uh, is, is deadly, so you know this movie does things with hair that you're never supposed to do with CG. Um, I mean, even just the smallest thing, just like touching hair, if you go back and watch any other CG movie, it rarely ever happens that you see on screen like a character moving hair. The experts at Disney Animation took on this challenge by creating an entirely new software to prevent the collision issue by using a new technique known as dynamic wires. To solve the problem of Rapunzel dragging very heavy air behind air, they added the tangential friction parameter for the ground contacts and then scaled it down so that the air is then able to easily slide along its length. They used a simulation freezing feature that turns off the simulation for the back part of the air, allowing them to adjust the length of the simulated air per shot accelerating the runtime of the simulation significantly. Technology has always represented a limit, that's why neither Princess Ariel nor the Little Boo had curly hair, though they were supposed to. Things changed in 2012 with the release of Brave. The flowing red locks of the first Pixar princess ever, Merida, perfectly defined the teenage princess fury temperament, but they are also a milestone for CG animation. It took six Pixar research engineers and artists more than three years to create a new air computer program called TAS. It could handle air to air collision in an intelligent, multi threaded way. This gave Merida's air the volume that's characteristic of curly air. TAS computed essentially two curves per head curl, one representing the curls and another representing the overall wave and movement along the length of the curl. It was also needed a fast way to generate curves, so they implemented essentially a curling irony in the computer to quickly create uniform locks. Last but not least, animators had to deal with the animation of Merida's hair, so a cut down much faster real time simulation was added for the animators for the first time in a Pixar production. The last proof of their importance came in 2013 with Frozen. Disney Animation Studios had to develop an all new software to enable artists to sculpt their characters' hair as a procedural volume. Elsa's hair contained more than 400,000 chili threads, 
four times the complexity of a real person hair. This is the level that they reached. Letting your hair down, there's a meaning behind that. So that moment when she pulls the braid down in the song, we wanted to, to have the most contrast that we possibly could. And I think when you finally have that moment, when you can just say, you know, I'm gonna stop caring about what people think and I'm gonna be my truest self, it's so liberating.